You know, I, basketball was my life growing up in New Bottom. I mean, I ate, drank, and slept basketball every day. You know, every time you saw me, I had a ball in my hand. So, and that was since I was four, five, six years old. Some people, bright and early, it's about that time, about to hit the road, I-95, head down to my hometown, New Bern, here we come, New Bern, North Carolina. I'm excited to get back, to speak an engagement, see a lot of people, family, friends, so stay tuned, we'll see you in a little bit. New Bern, I would describe my, my hometown as it's a small town, you know, and, you know, when I was growing up, everybody knows everybody. People are, are you know, down to earth, you know, the hospitality is great, you know, everywhere you go, the people speak to you. It's one of the things I miss, you know, being up north, is the southern hospitality. You know, and again, everybody's kind of down to earth. People are you know, genuine, you know, it's, it's, it's a nice small town. Yeah, I was excited to go back home uh, first of all, to see people. Uh, it's been a while since I've been home. You know, I'm excited to get back, see family, friends, former classmates. You know, that, that, that was the first thing. You know, it's always good to go back. And secondly, I was excited, you know, to, to speak to you know, student athletes in different high schools at the Christmas tournament. You know, and just get some home cooking too, you know. <laughs> you know that, that Southern cooking, there's nothing like it. You know, get some home cooking and you know, get some hush puppies and some barbecue, <laughs> you know, so, but yeah, that's, that's what I was looking forward to, you know, just hanging with people, family, friends, spending some time with them, you know, people I hadn't seen in years. Yeah, so, you know, I, basketball was my life growing up in New York. I mean, I, ate, drank, and slept basketball every day. You know, every time you saw me, I had a ball in my hand. So, and that was since I was four, five, six years old. You know, so it was always my thing. And my dad, God rest his soul, you know, my dad was like my first ever mentor. You know, my dad, you know, I owe a lot of credit to him because he instilled in me discipline, hard work, practice, you know, so all those things were instilled in me at a young age. There are a lot of great players that come from New Bern, you know. Uh, but my high school experience was great. I just put in a lot of time, work, effort, you know, planning to get some, some really good talent. And, you know, it propelled me to my next level, which was attending a prep school. Even if he didn't want to be the high point man for a shoot, he would always hit, you know, 20, 22 points. And he knew how to assist the well at an early age. And Dak just carried on and kept going on and on, right on through high school, you know, college and all of that. So you knew he could, he knew the game, he knew the game well. To do justice, I think my, uh, Magic Johnson had a lot to, you know, for playing the game. <laughs> had a big influence on him. Even, um, like what Sewer said, Isaiah Thomas, you know, back in the day, 
And that work ethic, it definitely came from his pops, you know, because his, his dad just kept him involved. You know, he had an opportunity. You know, he always took advantage of it and, and, and supported that and made sure that uh, he was involved with it. But DJ always, uh, he always put his faith first and he always stood for his faith. And I think that's very impressive. And uh, you have always been respectful young man, a young man that loved everybody. Hey, I'm just proud to be his uncle. Actually, my uncle, Uncle Donald and Uncle Ronald, actually the day of, like, I was like, hey, I, I sent a, a, a group text to a lot of family members. And hey, I'm coming home. I'll be speaking tonight at, at the high school, you know, at the Christmas tournament. Feel free to come out, you know, get a chance to see you guys and hear me speak. And my Uncle Donald and Ronald, sure enough, they told me they was coming. You know, they're, they're you know, two pillars of, of our, the Jarman family. You know, you know, I really, they, they have been a lot to me over the years. You know, it's my dad's brothers, you know, first of all, and, and his family, you know, whenever, when I was growing up, they always encouraged me, you know, um, when I was home, I always had something solid, you know, spiritually, you know, just things mentally to challenge me. So it was, it was great, to, it was great to see them. Because I honored my Lord and Savior, because I honored him, okay? He in turn blessed me and blessed my efforts. When I was in high school, there was there was camps called Five Star, Nike. I got an invite to Five Star, Pittsburgh. Alright? All the college coaches were there, all the top players in the country was there for that week. So this is before my senior year of high school. This is it. I put all my eggs in one basket. Okay. This is my time to be recognized as one of the top 100 players in the country. This is my time. The first night you just play, they just put you on team, you just, you just won. The high school sports writer, Tom Konchowski, okay, he rated all the players in the country. He was sending out publications to all the college coaches. So he comes up to me, say, you're me. He comes over, good job. Yeah, way to go. I broke, broke my name down on the clipboard. To keep up the good work. I got my eye on this week. All right? Thank you. So, I'm feeling good about myself. Director of Five Star, okay? He comes over to my room, and he's watching me from afar. He comes over and is like, man, who is that guy? Who, who's this kid? And then the coach that was there, he said, his name is Gerald Jarman. He said, nobody here can stop him. So, that night, you can imagine how I felt about myself, right? So this is Sunday night, the first night. This is what I want, this is what I came for, to impress these coaches, all right? Next day. So, you're me again. I mean, I'm thinking now, you know, I got some love for them now, so we're gonna like, we're gonna chop it up so we're gonna talk, you know, we're gonna talk more about basketball. And so he walks by me, so he does this. You're gonna be me, I'm gonna have a girlfriend. The other guy walk this way. Huh? I was, what's going on? Just last night, I was the guy. Like, so that went on Monday, it went on Tuesday. No love. So guys, you gotta understand, I'm crushed. Basketball is my life, like this is it. I had an orange Giddy's vibe I took to the camp with me. So I would go back to my room, I would breathe. All right, I used to go back to my room, I, I would be hurt. I would be sitting down like tears in my eyes, frustrated. But I would read that Bible every time. My roommate came out, I would go like this real quick. <laughs> you know, it, it wasn't cool, it wasn't cool. So I was just slipping in my bed real quick. I mean, ain't a cool thing to do, right? But here's the thing, though. I would go back on that court, and I was still performing at the elite level, despite them turning their backs on me. And now, all of a sudden, I had a peace and a contentment that basketball wasn't giving. Because you understand, basketball is failing for me. What I came for isn't working. So I could have easily just gave up, just threw in the towel. But you know what? I went out there and competed every single day. But that summer, I went back home, and I gave my life to the Lord. So that summer, because I had something I never had before, and God bless my efforts, and I'll share more about that tomorrow.